Hello, I'm Irfan and today we are going to prepare this beautiful fully dynamic income statement in Excel in the best possible way. Let us get started. So this is my general ledger that I have extracted from my accounting software and just like any other general ledger, this general ledger contains all the business transactions. For each transaction, you can see we have amount. We also have the date on which this transaction took place. And for the information on country, like in which country this uh, transaction took place, we have the territory key. When the information is displayed in keys, it means that, you know, the detailed information are, is available in a separate table. So if you can see in my file, we have a separate sheet here which is basically representing all the keys and you can see you know we have the keys available here and for each key we have a country and we also have the region so this way you can analyze your data on the basis of region and on the basis of country going back to my geo for the for each account key you can see we have this chart of accounts where for each account key we have the details like report which report they belong to and then class subclass subclass to account and sub account let me explain that how this works so you can you know that for each sub account we have a separate key so all the accounts that we have we have a separate account key for that and you can see we have different information available here in column g as well but then the way it has been defined is that each account either belongs to the balance sheet or the profit and loss statement if they belong to the balance sheet they are either part of assets or they are part of liabilities and owner's equity. If they are a part of assets, they either belong to the current assets or non-current assets. If they are current assets, they are either cash and cash equivalents or they are receivables or inventory or other assets or investments. And this finally, we have this account level, the most lower level of account that has been defined here. So you can see here the cash and bank we know that that is a part of cash and cash equivalents which belongs to the current assets which overall belong to the assets and which overall fall in the balance sheet category so this way we have defined our complete chart of accounts and by providing such a detailed comprehensive information my system my excel would now would now know that for each account how they have to classify if that account is in assets if they are assets, if they are current or non-current, if they are receivables or cash, if they belong to balance sheet or income statement. This way, all of this information has been provided to my Excel file. So you will have to do this exercise once in your company that for each account, you will have to maintain such an structure. Once you have done that, you only need to update it when you add a new general ledger account in your company which is definitely very rare now going back to my gl now you can see that i can analyze my general ledger on the basis of that territory and all the information that is available in that territory table i can also analyze my information on the basis of account key and all the levels which have been defined in the chart of accounts i mean we can segregate the balance sheet and income statement data we can segregate the assets and it, we, even within assets we can segregate current and non-current similarly for all the dates we have also defined a calendar table here which would help me break down the information on years quarters months and even days from this date field in my general ledger now the next thing is to analyze the information available in my general ledger in all those fields appearing in the other tables we either have to bring in all that information here in this table which is a lazy way and old style way of doing that the other better way of doing that is to use the power pivot and connect all of these separate tables using data modeling how does that work we are going to do that now so the very first thing that we need in our excel is this power pivot tab if you don't have that don't worry please click on file and then options and then in those options go to add-ins and in those add-ins 
click here on the com add-ins and click on go and here you have power pivot that you need to uh, click here and then click ok and your power pivot would be activated now once you have power pivot in your file all we need to do is to load all of these four tables into my data model so i will just click on this power pivot here and click on add to data model and you can see it has been uploaded to my data model so i will close this window go back again now do the same for chart of accounts add to data model and this has been added as well doing the same for the territory table as well add to data model and this has also been done and finally let us do the same for our calendar table as well just select this one and click on add to data model so all of these four tables have been added to data model that you can see here and now the next step that we are going to do is called data modeling so i will click on this diagram view here and now you can see you have all of these fields all of these tables appearing here what we need to do is that we need to connect these tables using the field that is common in between there so for example if i show you that calendar table and this gl table here there is one field there is one column that is common and in these two cases this is going to be the date column so i'll click here and i will drag it to this date and these two will be connected similarly if you look at these two tables you can see that both of these have territory key so if i click here and drag it down these two tables are also connected now and finally for the chart of accounts you can see we have the account key which is common in both of these tables i'll click here and you can see that these tables are also now connected so this step is data modeling and by doing that we have made sure that these tables can now interact with each other well now we are ready to deploy a pivot table which is going to be a power pivot table now so i will click here and i will click on pivot table and it will take me back to my original sheet original excel file and now you can see here we have our pivot table which has access to all of these four tables the very first thing that i want to do is to bring in the amount column from my gl table to the value section and now you can see we have this amount that is appearing here and the next thing that i want to do is to bring in the report field from here to the filters because i don't want to see all the accounts i only want to see the profit and loss related account i will bring in the report from my chart of accounts to this option here and then i will click here to make sure that i am only seeing the profit and loss related values the next thing that i want to see in my report is you know a class level and subclass level view so if you can just look here now we have the trading account operating non-operating and tax so these are basically the four levels in the income statement but if you if you know income statement you know it has to begin from the trading account so the trading account should be on the top then we should have the operating account then we should have the non-operating and finally we should have the uh, interest and tax so please scroll here and once you see this icon of four sided arrows click here and drag it to change the position and now you can see we have trading operating non-operating and interest and tax so finally after this i can also bring in the subclass level details as well and now you can see our profit and loss statement is coming in a proper structure where we have sales cost of sale so i want to see the sales on the top of cost of sale so i will make the small adjustment similarly the operating expenses should be on the top of depreciation and amortization so we have added one more level and your pnl is beautifully shaping up so i'll bring in the subclass level 2 as well and now you can see we have a lot of information some of which was not even needed so for example I did not want it to see that sales and cost of sales lines further expanded but this is something that you will have to you know uh, do it first and then where you don't need that you will be clicking here to 
reduced one level okay so finally we also want to bring in some other information about administration and all other accounts i will bring in the account level information and now here in this level i don't want to see the details on depreciation and amortization so i will just you know uh, further shrink that and let me change the order here so now you can see we have sales cost of sales in the operating expenses we have administration marketing and sales and distribution i don't want to see this detail as well okay so the profit and loss statement is almost very well shaped now well you can definitely like to bring in the sub account level as well here but i think i'm done with this structure i'm okay okay with this level of details so i will just go here and i will click on value field settings and i will click on number format and I will say make it number with no decimal points and use a comma separator and you can also decide that if you want to see the negative uh, number in brackets or in a negative sign I want to see that in bracket and you can also decide if you want the font color for negatives to be red or black I will stick with black for now now I'll click OK and click OK and now you can see your numbers are properly structured so the basic profit and loss statement is ready the next thing that we want to achieve here is to split our amount column into years so we should be able to see our data yearly and for that you can bring in the year column from here to the columns but let us do it with the date and let excel define the years itself and the benefit of doing that will be now since excel has made this hierarchy for you itself you can click here to split the data quarterly and even monthly and even on the daily basis as well so i will go back all the levels and i would say that i would repeat that rather than directly bringing in the year column i would rather bring in the date column so that excel can also create this hierarchy for me let me also get rid of this grand total here for that i will click on design and i will say grand totals and i would say that on for columns only and this should actually eliminate this subtotal from this level now after this i want to make my profit and loss statement responsive to the slicer in fact this is all responsive to the slicer already all i need to do is to add a slicer for country and for that I will click here on my country column on my TBL territory and on the countries I will right click and I will say add as slicer and once you do that if I just click anywhere on any country you can see that all of my values are now changing in response to the country I click so I will just remove all the filters, all the slicers by clicking here and we are back to our overall profit and loss statement so this way you can easily add filters now if I, I would just add one more slicer here and that is going to be for the quarter so I will go back to the calendar and I will say quarter right click and add as slicers and now if I can just show you if I click here all my numbers are responsive to the sl slicer so this way you can add as many slicers as you want so the profit and loss statement preparation is going to be very easy if we just use the right tools which is power pivot and tax